And there's comedy now on BBC One as four contestants compete to get away from it all by winning the golden holiday in Bob's Christmas Full House. <laughs> Christmassy mood, you've had a marvellous Christmas day. I hope you all did at home too. Ah, Christmas, the Jewish feast of turnover. <laughs> well, today is Boxing Day, that's the Christian feast of leftovers. <laughs> we, had, we had great plans for you today. We, we were going to have uh, guest celebrities here as famous pantomime characters. We asked Arthur Scargill if he'd come along as Old King Cole. <laughs> <laughs> We asked Mrs. Thatcher if she'd come along as old Mother Hubbard, <laughs> whose cupboard was bare, but she's given away the little bit of china she had. <laughs> ah. we, actually, I'll tell you what we did hope to have. We actually invited Princess Anne to come along as a fairy godmother, but she went off shooting again. <laughs> of course, it hasn't been, a, hasn't been exactly a white Christmas, but it has been a, a tight Christmas, hasn't it? I didn't realise how hard times were till yesterday morning, Christmas morning, Santa Claus came down my chimney and stole my stocking. <laughs> I said to Santa, I said, how's Rudolph? He said, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yesterday, it was family, yesterday. I had all my wife's in-laws over for Christmas dinner. Oh, God. They took one look at the Christmas turkey and they pulled it apart and ate it in three minutes. My wife was delighted it saved her the bother of cooking it. <laughs> Being Boxing Day, of course, we want to do something special. So we have contestants here who represent four services that serve us all through the year and deserve a great big thank you at this special time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet my Christmas Full House guests. <laughs> Is this the name you've given our researchers? Muff? I'm afraid it is. I must call you by your proper name. What is your full name? Mavanwi Ryle Davis. M M Very nice name, Muff. <laughs> Mavanwi Ryle Davis. Right. What part of Wales do you come from? Jamaica. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I love that end of Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> You were born in Jamaica? Yes. Really? Yes. Well, I can see that you're a nurse. Uh, what's your proper title? Staff nurse. Is it a modern hospital? No, not really. It's been it's 90 years old next year. Oh, gosh. But you have modern equipment, non-stick bedpans, that kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> <laughs> what's your ambition? Do you want to be a doctor? No, I'd like to open a wine bar. <laughs> oh. Well, you must remember... If ever one of your customers says they'd like to, to taste the white wine, do not give them the bottle and say, here is a specimen. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, we have a special uh, feature on this edition of Bob's Full House, because it's being Christmas. Not only do we hope our contestants win some smashing prizes, but every number they light on their bingo card will be worth ten pounds. So each number that you light, as it lights up, is worth ten quid. And they all got together, the four of them, and said, well, we don't want to take that money for ourselves. We'd like to give it to charity. So I imagine the charity that you've chosen is your very own nurse's charity. Yes, the Benevolent Fund for nurses. The Benevolent Fund. Well, however much you win on those numbers, that's where it's going to go. It's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> You look very smart, sir. That's a smart, smart uniform. That is the uniform of? Station officer in the London Fire Brigade. Your name is Bob? Bradfield. And you see, it's funny to see you, you know, off duty on Boxing Day in uniform. I thought, being a fireman, you'd be wearing a blazer. Or a, <laughs> or a smoking jacket. Could be a smoking jacket. <laughs> Any flaming thing would do. <laughs> oh, think how I feel. Think how I feel. You can't afford to make mistakes in your business. Have you ever made any? Uh, there was a time when we pulled up to a RTA and there's a crash. Jumped out and had a look at the bloke in the car. He's sitting there with his head over. 
uh, and it looked like he had a severe gash to his face. So oh. one of the blokes got the bandages off, wrapped it up, wrapped his face off, and we got him away to hospital. Mm. Got back to the fire station, there's a call from the hospital. Would we mind removing the man's Kentucky Fried Chicken next time before we bandage him up? <laughs> With a, with a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Well, where, where he'd been involved in the crash, he went forward into his supper. <laughs> he lifted up and... Uh... See, anyway, my wife could get me to eat it, too. <laughs> Your, any money that you win will go to... The Fire Service National Blevin Fund. I think everyone approves. <laughs> Angela, lovely to see you here, representing the Order of St John. You've been with St John's Ambulance a long time? Yes, I joined when I was eight and a half. Oh, goodness. So have you got <laughs> merit badges and things like that? Yes, I've got my grand prize badge. Oh, that's the grand prize yes, badge, grand of course. Prize badge. Now, what did you have to know in order to get that? I had to do 12 courses, and at the end of each of those courses, I had to do an exam. So that would be like first aid? I did first aid, quite a few others, first aid and childcare, yeah. and then I also did casualty simulation and faking. Casually simula casualty, casualty simulation, simulation and, and faking. faking. Yes, my first wife was very good at simulation and faking. <laughs> That was the casualty, that was the problem. <laughs> Do you get embarrassed examining men? Do you have to examine men? Yeah, I think they're more embarrassed than we are. But you have examined a few in your oh, time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where do you live? <laughs> where did you say you live? I live at Felton. Felton? <laughs> However, I know you're one of how many people doing voluntary work? For There's 40,000. 40,000. How many year, how many, this year, how many hours have you put in free of charge? 978. Of course. Clifton Worry. Clifton Worry, you're here representing what group? Uh, the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. Ah, uh, marvellous job you did too. Something else. Are your boats really unsinkable? Uh, yes, the one we have is, is totally unsinkable. You ought yes. to lend it to Cambridge for the next boat race. <laughs> <laughs> They're marvellous things, the image everybody has in their minds of a life right from when you're a child. My, my wife and I were involved in a, a disaster at sea. The captain of the boat married us. <laughs> <laughs> Your money's going to the Lifeboat Institute, yes. the Royal Lifeboat Institute, and I wish you luck, all of you, because you're nice people and you do a great job. Object of the first round of Bob's Full House is to light all four corners of your bingo card. First person to do that will get their pick of this glittering group. And for the four corners, this up to the minute Art Deco Lady Lamp. A selection of coordinated towels and an Alibaba basket. And finally, this high tech three in one stereo entertainment center. <laughs> It's only round one, and you have a bombardment of bounty there to choose from. On your buttons, then, if you answer a question wrongly, you will be wallied for one question only. As soon as we pass that next question, then you'll be unwallied again. OK, on your buttons. True or false, there are no calories in a glass of water. And Bob? True. It is true. Not sure about Spanish water. I don't know how many calories <coughs> there are in 10 million germs. Do you remember? <laughs> corner, Bob. One little duck. One little duck! <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Name the oldest international agency for gathering news. Bob. Reuters. Reuters is right. And my wife, you could have mentioned her. Give me another call. <laughs> Five and one. Five and one, fifty-one is lit for Bob. True or false? The commonest surname in the world is Smith. And it's Muff. True. It isn't true, Muff. No, the commonest surname is Chang. There were 80 million Changs in China alone. <laughs> this is the truth. This is the truth. We research this. We check the yellow pages. <laughs> You're wallied, you may not answer this next question. True or false, every snowflake is unique. And it's Bob. True. It is true. Gosh, that must have taken a lot of checking. <laughs> well, who did the research on that? Give me another corner, Bob. Golden guy. Does it do a string of pearls good to be worn every so often? And it's Clifton. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Though John Inman swears it lost in the part of Bodie and the professionals. <laughs> Give me a corner. Uh, top of the shop, number 60, please. Top of the shop, 6-0 oh, is lit for Clifton. Was sailors go from door to door singing, and it's uh, Muff. Carols. Carol singing is right. They visited Nigel Lawson last night, Christmas night. He collected ten quid off them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he made them pay the VAT. Give me a call. <laughs> Number one. Can his eye number one is lit for Muff? Can a Yorkshire Terrier have a nervous breakdown? And is Bob for it to win? Yes. 
He came up with a great game. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. He's got a first round well played, Bobby. He gets the choice in this lot. How will he look at this guy for the goodies? There's a back check for a lap. There's a lap in basket. There's a towel falling out. And there's a, it's a TV and it's a cassette player and it's a complete... Uh, the ideal home entertainment for the bedroom, if you're at my age. <laughs> so you set player, please, Bob. Right, it's yours. Thank you. So far, Muff has got £10 for her nurse's charity, Bob has got £40 for his, Clifton has £10 for his, Angela has yet to collect, but I know she'll pull up, because this is the round where we invite you to try and fill your middle line. First person to fill the middle line will get a choice of this gallimaufry of goodies. A home computer starter kit plus five games. A hamper of natural his and hers beauty treatments. The latest free program telephone answering machine. Oh, I see. <laughs> Who's going to collect on this round? Now, for this round, you have to fill your middle line, and each of you may or may not have a lucky number on the middle line. Pick your lucky number, answer correctly. You'll like that number and win a mystery prize. The way you do it is you look at the numbers on your middle line and then you check them against something which is humorously entitled the Monkhouse MasterCard. <laughs> In bingo, lingo, pickety clicks, it's time to take your pick of the six. Move them, let's see the subjects. And there they go. Sport from 1 to 10, show business from 11 to 20, and so to the top of the shop with famous people from 51 to 60. Check your numbers, choose subjects that you feel strong about, and uh, uh, in order of luck, Muff goes first. Legs 11. Legs 11? <laughs> well blown. It's a showbiz question, as you know. Which noisy children's TV series was hosted by Leslie Crowther? Crackerjack. Wrong, the price is right. No, no, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you got your 11 lit. Bobby. Uh, 1 and 7, 17, please. Bob. 17. 17 is on the subject of showbiz again. For which 1979 film did Dustin Hoffman receive the Best Actor Award? Graduate. It's open to the others. It was on over to over on television. <coughs> yes, Angela. Kramer versus Kramer. He's right, yes. Very well answered. Kramer versus Kramer. Ever since he's fought with his wife at the custody of the Oscar, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> 47. 47, okay, we've lit 47 because you don't like the subject of the past. You don't care for history, so you've eliminated that on this round. Clifton, up your middle line. Uh, 33 feathers. <laughs> Listen to that sound. 33 fab hours on the subject of cooking gives you a mystery prize if you answer this question correctly. Get it right, you light your 33 and you win a mystery prize. What is an Arctic roll? Ice cream with a sponge cake around it. That's absolutely right. A Swiss roll filled with ice cream. <laughs> Glad to see what you want. Let's see the mystery prize to pick Lankford. What a joy to see you here, Bonnie. Oh, it's lovely to be here. Shall I come down here? Yes, do, Cinders. Lovely. That's I think lovely. That, uh, Beauty and Peanuts rather like my dress. They're not going to outlib, are they? <laughs> <laughs> they might eat it. <laughs> <laughs> what mystery prize have you brought for Clifton? Well, I've brought an evening out at Wimbledon Pantomime, which is Cinderella. Were you playing Cinders? I am indeed. And yes. Bill Owens there, isn't he? Bill Owens there, and Paul Nicholas, and Kathy Staff, and lots of other lovely people. So there's four seats to the Panto, mm. and uh, what are they going to do when they get to Wimbledon? Uh... There, also, they can have a meal. Oh, really? Can dinner for meal? four? Yes, dinner for four. Oh, and, of course, come over and, and see me afterwards, if yes. they want. Yes. Oh, you get it, Justin. Bonnie Langford, ladies and gentlemen. Rather nice, Clifton. Mm -hmm. Angela, you've still only got one number lit on your bingo card. 35, please, Bob. 35, on the subject of cooking. <laughs> Which of these is the most popular dish in the USA? Fried chicken, hot dogs, or pizza? Fried chicken. Fried chicken is right. Well answered. I once met Colonel Sanders. Oh, it's exciting. I licked his fingers. That's <laughs> 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 a get sneaky now. You don't need Mix the six, please. <laughs> This is from 1 to 10. Christmas is a new subject down the bottom there. It's a nice one for Boxing Day. Muff, off your middle line. 43, please. 43 is on the subject of films for Muff. Name the American film star who'll be spending this Christmas in a British jail. Mm. Stacey Keach. She's right. Just got it under the time limit. Oh. 
Tracy keeps it in. Not his fault, by the way. He heard there was a coal strike. He tried to smuggle in some coke. That's all. <laughs> Bob off your middle line. Uh, man alive, number five. Man alive, number five. Oh, listen to that sound. It tells you that you've picked the subject of places and answer this question correctly. You will like your number five and you will win a mystery prize. Bob, in what capital is Red Square? Moscow. It's right. You've liked your number five and you've got a... After, after the excesses of yesterday right, and today, that's a good thing to have. Just a glass of lemon juice and a carrot. I'll give that on that. I tell you what, you can go and collect it on a luxury weekend at a superb health farm, and I think you'll enjoy yourself. Really. <laughs> Marvel. 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 for Clifton. He likes the subject of Christmas. All right. On the first day of Christmas, what did my true love send to me? A partridge in a pear tree? Yes, you should see what I sent my first wife, though. An oven-ready vulture. <laughs> <laughs> and we've lit all your fires, Angela. 56, please. Five and six, 56. 56 for Angela. 56 is again on the subject of Christmas. In Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, what birds did the Cratchits have for their humble Christmas dinner? A goose. It did, yes, only a little one. Only a little one. <laughs> the budgie kicked sand over it. Well, well, <laughs> mix the six again, please. <laughs> and there is a Christmas is now at the clock. You see how we fool you? You look at those numbers, you've got to find out whether you're six or 29 or 38. Muff. Number six, please. Number six, Tom <laughs> found it. You found your lucky number. Answer it correctly. You'll light your six and win a mystery prize. Christmas superstition, Muff. What are you supposed to do in your home by Twelfth Night? Take all the decorations down. And you've got a mystery prize. Well done. <laughs> Here's the prize you've won. Mm -hmm. Open session here now. John Inman, what a joy. It is, isn't it? <laughs> Can you come all the way from Bromley like that? Uh, no, I, so I didn't walk through the streets. I came on the oh, bus. Oh, the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were lucky to get it. <laughs> <laughs> and what is the name of the panto? Mother Goose. What else, yes, eh, on the bus? The Churchill Theatre, Bromley. What's the special Bromley. prize that you've, you've got? Well, it's wonderful. I'd like it myself, actually. It's a day out round the sails and a champagne lunch. <laughs> and I must tell you, it's not grace It's not grace well, you it. Not yours, isn't it? Oh, Bob, oh, oh, what's your middle line? All the fours. All the fours? On the subject of famous people. What did George Sand and George Eliot have in common? George Inventors. Sand and George Eliot had what in common? Bobby shaking his head. Inventors. It's open to the others and it's not. Same name. Same person. No, darling, and we can't throw it open to Angela, who I think knows the answer too. What a shame. They're both women writers who used men's Male names, men. which is uh, nobody today could make a living out of looking like a girl and calling themselves George. <laughs> Anyway, Muff, that means uh, you can't interrupt on the next one, should Clifton get it wrong, which he won't. Give me a number. Uh, my age, uh, please, Bob, 27. 27? My age on the subject of sport. What's the shortest term of office ever served by a football league club manager? Is it three days, three weeks, or three months? I'd say three days. By Bill Lampton of Scunthorpe United, the only man to make Malcolm Allison look like a stick in the mud. <laughs> three days is right, you've looked at 27. Well done. Angela, 13 or 22. Unlucky for some. Unlucky for some. Oh, it's lucky for you, you're 13. How marvellous. On the subject of films, answer this correctly, you'll light your 13 and win a mystery prize. In the film E.T., what did those initials mean? Extraterrestrial. You've won your mystery prize, Angela. Don't get too excited. It's a model of a gondola for your mantelpiece. I tell you what, that's, uh, that's very exciting. It's not good enough for the Order of St. John. We'll, we'll do a no expenses spared candlelit dinner for two for you in Little Venice. Wouldn't that be lovely? <laughs> on the canal. Let's mix 
to six again. Six to six for his computer. Double up all those objects. Bring them back. Now they're all different. And now you look at the last two numbers left on your middle line. Muffin, you choose one. 29, please. 29. Oh, you like the subject of famous people. All right, then. What did Van Gogh chop off and send to his lover? His ear. Thereby inventing ear mail. <laughs> you only need one now for your middle line. Bob. Two and five. Two and five, twenty-five for Bob. That's on the subject again of famous people. Anthony Van Dyke is reputed to have painted Charles I's portrait three times, seven times, or thirty-six times. Thirty-six. Yes, you're right. Absolutely right. Thirty-six times. That's right. Fifteen. Number eighteen. Bob Thirty. Number eighteen. Eighteen. Who played the name part in the movie musical which was on BBC last Sunday? Scrooge. Albert Finney? So, yes, Albert Finney is right. Marvellous. Well played. And so, really, is one who this round. 22. 22. Two little ducks. Wow. Again, on famous people, it's a favourite one of yours, isn't it? What musician became Prime Minister of Poland? Chopin? Not Chopin. Open to the others. <laughs> Clifton. Paderewski. Paderewski. In Britain, we've done even better. We've got a one man band. <laughs> but they haven't been. Paderewski, you're right. And ask the phone, which one of those do you want to take away with you? Oh, the computer, please, Bob. You're going to take the computer? Yes, please. That's marvellous. That's a beautiful class. Uh, Mark has £50 uh, for her nurse's charity, and Bob has for the fireman here at Benevolent, he has £60 and £60 for uh, Clifton. Angela's already got 40 where she thought she hadn't got anything a little while ago. And uh, I'm delighted that we're doing so well right now. We're going for the full house. The first person to completely fill his or her bingo card will get his or her choice of this strange range. And for the full house, a 22-inch Teletext Kelly in teeth. A grandfather clock in a traditional design. Tape your favourites of 85 on this luxury video. Lovely <laughs> prizes. Let's see which one of you is going to get the full house and get £150 for your charity and take home the, one of those prizes. Good luck to all of you starting now. Name Lois Lane's superhero. And it's Bob. Superman. He's correct, and we liked you 23. What time did the clock strike in Hickory Dickory Dock? And it's Angela. One o'clock. That's right, we liked you number four. Which famous regiment of the British Army wear red berets? And it's Bob. Paratroops. He's correct, and we liked you 32. Which river runs through Paris? And it's uh, Angela. The Seine. The Seine is right, and we liked you number 12. Who rode Black Bess? And it's Angela. Dick Turpin. He's correct, and we liked you 21. Who originated the catchphrase, Wakey? Wakey! Wakey, wakey, Bob. Billy Cotton. Billy Cotton it was, and we liked you 41. How many weekdays have a T for toffee in them? And his mouth. Two. Three. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, your wallet, you can't answer this. Name the lead singer of the pop group Queen. And it's Angela. Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury, we liked you 34. You're unwallied, Muff. What's the top selling record this Christmas? And it's Angela. Band Aid, don't they know it's Christmas? Uh, did that absolutely feed the world, yes, indeed. Have you got a top line now? Is the Eiffel Tower taller in winter or summer? And it's Angela. It's the same all year round. No, it's metal expands in heat. It's actually taller, quite a bit taller. Angela, you wallet, you may not answer this. What was the name of Queen Elizabeth's first husband? And it's Clifton. She wasn't married. She never married, and you like the number three. Well done, Clifton. What is origami? And it's uh, Angela. It's the art of paper folding. Yes, it is. Japanese art. We like your 22. You've got the two top lines now left. If you saw an F on a Spanish tap, what would come out of it? And it's enough. Cold water. Cold water is correct. We like to 26. What colour? What colour is the Queen's blotting paper? Black or white? And muff. Black. Hey, sorry, it's Bob. What? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it's black, Bob, to prevent it being red in a mirror. So your wallet, you may not answer this. Which Mediterranean Prime Minister resigned last weekend? And it's Angela. Don Minto. He's correct, of Malta. We like your number nine. He's standing on the bottom line. It's, it is all baloney. Where is it from? And Bob. It's a load of rubbish. It's uh, Bologna in Italy. Oh, Italy. That's where we got it from. Sorry about that. again. You can't answer this one, Bob. What number can't be written in Roman numerals? One number cannot be Clifton. Zero. Zero is correct. We like your 15. That's a tough one to get. What's the, what's the sex of a brown garden snail? And it's uh, muff. Both sexes. That's right, simultaneously, after mating both their eggs. 
we like to say the seven. Name the only mammal born without wings that flies. A mammal born without wings, we fly at... A bat. Angela, no, it's us. You and me, the rest of us, we're born without wings, but we fly, <laughs> providing you can afford the plane ticket. Okay. Yeah, Bob, did you meant to answer this. How many times a year does a penguin mate? And, uh, Bob? Once. Once? Well, not a penguin, two penguins. It takes two. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, uh, number 17 for you. What are the parents of a mule? And Clifton. A horse and a donkey. Uh, that's absolutely right. Why one finds the other attractive, I've no idea. We like to spend four. In a word, in a word, what's the difference between May and Hawthorne? No? They're the same. They are. There's no difference at all. And we like your 42. Where does where a, where a properly dressed Scot stick his dirt? Bob. In his socks. In his sock, is right. In his stocking or his sock. Yes, we like your number 40 for that. Who had almost everything done by Friday? And it's Angela. Robinson Crusoe. It's right. We like your 14. You only need three for a full house now. With each generation, our nose is getting bigger or smaller. And it's Clifton. Smaller. They're getting bigger, I'm afraid, and uh, shouldn't have stuck your nose in there, Clifton. <laughs> <laughs> How many heads would I have if I were bicephalous? Bob. Two. Two is right, and you've got your middle line lit now. You only need three for a full house. How many years in a century? And Bob. Hundred. A hundred is right, and we like your 19. You only need two for a full house. Name the largest flightless bird. And his muff. Ostrich. His ostrich is right. You've got your top line. We like your 52. No, who, wrote, who wrote about Noddy and Big Ears? Enough. Enid Blyton. Enid Blyton is right. We like your 38. Your two top lines. And on we go towards the ending wire. How many E's in William Shakespeare? Bob. Um, two. There are three in William Shakespeare. Your wallet may not answer this. Whose face is said to have launched a thousand ships? And it's Angela. Helen of Troy. He's correct. You only need two for a full house. What a maid. What a maid from Sugar and Spice. And all things nice. Clifton. Little Girls. Little Girls is right. We like your 31. Which legendary creature rose from the ashes of a fire? Clifton. Phoenix. The Phoenix is right. You've got your two top lines. You now only need four for a full house. Which London dog show takes place each February? And it's Angela. Crofts. Crofts is right. We like to go to the one for a full house. Introduces which TV show is the phrase to boldly go? To boldly go, Clifton. Star Trek. Star Trek is right. You like to number seven. You only need three for a full house. Name the statue in New York Harbor. And it's Clifton. Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is right. You like to twenty. You only need two for a full house. On their record-breaking transatlantic flight, where did Alcock and Brown land? And it's Clifton. In Ireland. In Ireland, at County Galway, you need one for a full house. What is the name of the Ewing family home in Dallas, and the Angela? South Fork. It's South Fork! <laughs> Can I have the grandfather clock, please? You can have the grandfather clock, please. You'll never have any excuse for being late for the Order of St. John That's and right. all the <laughs> activities with you. Oh, listen, I do congratulate you. What a smashing team of players you are. Muff, it's been lovely having you here on the show, really. Thank you. You're a sparkling personality. You've got a day at the sales, oh, which okay. I, hope, I hope you will enjoy immensely, okay. plus a lovely uh, evening out. And you've got a, a hundred pounds uh, for your charity, for the Nurses Benevolent Fund. I congratulate you for that. I think they'll be very, very thrilled indeed with you. And Bob, You've stood up well for the fire brigade. You've also got a fine TV radio cassette player and a weekend in a health farm. I know you don't think you need it. <laughs> I wish I was coming with you. I, don't, I certainly could do with losing a few pounds. And you also won £130 uh, for your charity for the farm. Thank you. <laughs> and Clifton, you'll, you'll be coming back up the, uh, the A13 to come back to London from Southend to go and see, oh, lovely show, Bonnie Langford uh, in pantomime in Cinderella. And you'll have uh, dinner, as you know, for four or lunch, should you choose to go to a matinee. And you have that supercomputer, which is really a knockout. And you, as you know, you have £140 that you've won on behalf of the Royal Lifeboat Institute. Congratulations on that. You've done very well. And Angela, you've done so well. I'm so proud of you. And I'm sure everybody in the Order of St. John is going, yeah, she's our girl. You've got dinner in Little Venice, and you've got a beautiful grandfather clock, so you'll never forget your visit to Bob's Full House. We would like you to have more. We'd like you to have a holiday. Would you like to join me at your golden bingo card? <laughs> Your golden finger card. Oh, it's an exciting moment. So let's flash the figures, please. There they go. The computer now sticks up the figures. We say a prayer to Mammon. We say make them big numbers. Now those can be worth money, or they can be, uh, as you know, you know how this works. I have 15 questions here. You've got a minute to answer them, and you must reveal all the letters that spell out the holiday in order to take it. Okay. In the Cinderella Panto, what did the pumpkin become? 
Coach. That's right. It stopped the clock. Gave you an easy one to start. Pick a number. Number 60. Top of the shop. We'd like that to be money, I think. Yes, good. 60 quid. There it is at the bottom in the bank of your golden bingo clothes. Rather a nice one. Nice way to start. Start the clock. What is the flavour of Cointreau? Oranges. Yes, that's right. And uh, pick a number. Number 24. 24. Two dozen. Oh, that's nice. Another 84 pounds we're up to. In which play do you clap to save Tinkerbell? Peter Pan. Peter Pan is correct. Uh, number 18. 18. Where's that? Oh, yes, I got it. Is it a letter? Oh, good. We've got one letter. Oh, that's nice. An L. You're going to go to L. <laughs> Which evergreen is the bush for those born in December? The holly. It is, yes. Number 49. 49, 409, are you a letter? No, more money, 49 quid, 133 pounds now, good total. In which sport do you hear about snatch and jerk? I don't know. Weightlifting, ten to go. What colour boat do the owl and the pussycat go to sea in? Pea green. That's right, a beautiful pea green boat. We've stopped the clock, you still have uh, 39 seconds. 31. Number 31, is it a letter? Yes, we've got another letter, that's good. O, L. Oldham is lovely at this time of the year. <laughs> Start the clock. In the song, how far do jingle bells have to jingle? All the way. All the way. <laughs> Eight questions left. We still have 33 seconds. Pick a number. 54. 54? Give the usual name for the turkey bone called the merry thought. The wishbone. Yeah, I was trying to give you a little hint with my little finger there. The wishbone is right. Okay. Do you think you can find another letter? 15. 15? All right. Uh, which astrological sign covers birthdays on December the 25th? Capricorn? That's right. I wonder how you got that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I tell you, you really want to try and find a letter. Number three. Uh, number three for a letter. Yes, got to be a letter, hasn't it? Yes! <laughs> In which ocean is Christmas Isle? The Pacific. Yes, that's right. You still have five questions left. You could still find that holiday. Number 33. Number 33, all the three's peppers, and you found it. H-O-L-L. -L. Very well oh. guessed, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote the words and music of White Christmas? Irving Berlin. Is correct, with four left and 18 seconds. Let's see if we can find another Number letter. seven. Number seven, down here. Lucky seven. Are you a letter? No, you're seven quid. 209 pounds. Give me another name for Father Christmas. St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas is fine. Let's see if we can find another. 39. It's 39 pounds, but you could still do it. You could still do it. You still have three questions left. If you, you get them all right and you pick the three letters remaining, you will still be in the holiday. Who introduced the first Christmas tree to Buckingham Palace? Prince Albert. He's right. Very well done. 55. 55. All the fives. Be a letter. Yes. H-O-L-L-A. You have two questions left. You have time, 11 seconds. It's enough time to answer them, but you must get them both right and you must find the other two letters. On what date is Christmas Day celebrated in New Zealand? Same day as here, 27th right. December. Yeah, that's exactly right. And we stopped the clock with seven seconds to go. It's the same day as here, of course. Number 50. Number 50. It's got to be a letter. It's got to be a D. Yes, it's a D. Now all we have to find is an N. I wonder where it could be. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your last one. You've got to get it right. Which Christmassy decoration has a snapper in it? A Christmas cracker. Yes, yes. and look forward to that luxury break in Holland. Enjoy the sights of Amsterdam and thrill to the dazzling display of springtime blue. And the cavorting through the tulips in Amsterdam. <laughs> and I'll tell you what's even better, ladies and gentlemen, in my mind. Angela's won £248 here for herself. She won £150 for St John Ambulance. She just said to me, please put them both together. I want it all to go to St John. contestants all received the maximum you could have won. There'll be 150 pounds for each of your other charities as well. Compliments to Bob Spillhart. Join us again in 1985. Once you be with us, I promise we'll open the doors for you again to Bob Spillhart next year. Bonnie Langford is currently appearing in Cinderella at the Wimbledon Theatre and John Inman is appearing in Mother Goose at the Churchill Theatre, Bromley. And there's more comedy in a moment on BBC One when there's no place like home.